Hey, what's up, you guys? Wyatt XM here, everyone's favorite YouTuber who stutters and mispronounces. And today we're going to do another uh, segment series of worst to best. This going to be the band of summoning. Now, I did this previously for Anelmoth Rock, and a lot of you guys really liked the idea and gave me a lot of great suggestions. And it's not like you guys need to tell me that uh, summoning was one I had to do because I was planning way ahead of that to do a summoning one. The reason why it took me so long is because this, making this list from worst to best was insanely difficult. Summoning, again, is one of my all-time favorite bands, and this is a band, in my my view, that has never made a bad album. They've never, they've never made a dud. Every single album captivates the roots of what made Summoning so grand and great. And even their debut full length, which really isn't a true Summoning album to some fans, is still very good for what it is. So making this list was very, very difficult. But um, even though uh, the first ones I want to show are obviously from worst to best, even the ones I consider their worst, I still love. So this was very difficult, but number one should be pretty obvious. So we're going to start it off at number seven, because they made seven full lengths. Number seven is their latest one, uh, which is Old Morning's Dawn. Still very good. Do not get me wrong. Do get me wrong. Even though I put this last, number seventh, I still enjoy it a lot. It's just, I guess, the, the only things I don't care about it that make it down so low on the list is that it seems like they're going for more of a pagan approach. There's a little bit more folk influence, especially with this one. Um... And it's a tad bit repetitive, which I know Summoning often does repetitive guitar riffs to create that massive epic scope atmosphere that they've done for over 20 years now. But this one, they really went a little too much with it. Still very good for what it is. It's still worth buying and listening to. I know I'm talking down on it, but songs I really enjoy are uh, of Pale White Mounds and um, what's the other one? Where is it? The White Tower. Those two tracks are incredible and make it worth alone to check out. But yeah, uh, Old Morning's Dawn, it's definitely my least favorite. Second to last, coming in at number six, which I bet a lot of you guys thought I put dead last. Uh, but I've given it more listens and I've appreciated it for what it is. Number six is Lugbers. Now, <laughs> you already know what I want to say. It's not that true summoning sound. They had a drummer at this point. I think his name was uh, Thantafaxis or something like that. Or uh, let me just check to be sure because I feel really dumb saying that. Uh, Try Fixin'. Wow, I'm thinking of the fucking Canadian black metal band. Yeah, Try Fixin'. They had a drummer at this point in their uh, in their lineup, and I do like it for what it is. I mean, songs like the Flight of the Nazgul. Uh, through the Valley of the Frozen Kingdom, The Eternal Lands of Fire. You know, great tracks, don't get me wrong. It's more uh, traditional black metal sound. It's still atmospheric for what it was. And recording this back in the early, early 90s, it's still a very captivating and well-executed album for its time. But again, it doesn't have that charm that I'm just so familiar with with summoning with all the other albums that came after this. And I know summoning really tries to ignore that they made this album, but they did, and it's still very good for what it is, and I don't really consider it their worst anymore. It's just, I guess what kind of ticks me off, and maybe this is just me being a big summoning fanboy to an extreme, is that when people say this is their best, it's like saying, yeah, summoning was their best when they sounded like everyone else. And it just doesn't have that charm like other albums do. It doesn't have the synth. It doesn't have that captivating, epic atmosphere as albums that came after it. But still, don't get me wrong, still a very good album. So Lugbirds comes in at number six. Now, the top five, god damn, this was tough. Because I love all these albums equally. It came down to the point of which ones I could gravitate to going to more. So all these are fucking flawless albums. So number five is their third album, Dole Golder, which is the Fortress of the Elves, I'm pretty sure, in the Lord of the Rings. Uh... Um, book by uh, Tolkien. Now, Dole Golder 
I think is uh, pretty much a sequel to Minus Morgul. It has the same, you know, type of song structure where, you know, it's more riff oriented than synth. And the synth does pop up in the songs, but it kind of grabs your attention a little bit more because it comes in at different moments in the song to make it, you know, more interesting and not as repetitive. And songs like the Night uh, Nightshade Fortress and, uh, I can't say this for the life of me, it's track four, God, God and Dun? I don't know, I can't speak Elvish. Um, still very good for what it is, and really the atmosphere at this point is when the vocals come through and it gives off that echo effect that summoning really I feel like is mastered and makes everything just so much more bigger in scope and that's what I just uh, really enjoy about this album so even though I still love this album I don't play it nearly as much as the other four that are going to come after this but Dole Golder comes in at number five and before we get into this too one thing I also want to talk to you guys about uh, I know a couple of uh, a while now, I, I think six months ago, Napalm Records did a reissue of all the summoning albums on vinyl, and they're still available, which I don't understand for like under like they're all double LP, so they go for twenty five uh, dollars or something like that. And people are buying the reissues on Discogs for fifty dollars. Like, come on, guys, go to Napalm Records and buy the records there and save yourself half the fucking money. So I just wanted to point that out. All right, moving on to number four, and god damn, woo, the middle part of their career is they were on fucking fire. Number four is the album I always forget, but it's Let Moral, Mortal Heroes uh, Sing Your Fame. I always forget this album title because of how long it is, but this is where the really triumphant moments in their song structures come through with this. In Hollow Halls Beneath the uh, the Falls, the Fells, and Our Folds Shall Fall. Jesus Christ, I just want to march into a battle listening to those songs. And with, um, oh, what's the dude's name, or his stage name, rather? With uh, Protector having these just really grand, massive uh, vocals and shrieks that just get more atmospheric, more epic as the songs go on. It really gives me goosebumps each and every time I listen to this album. And on special occasions, really, I listen to this album where I'm really in the mood for something really atmospheric and really triumphant with a bit of charm, a tad bit of cheese to make that charm all the more uh, charismatic. I always go to this album. So number four is uh, Let Moral Heroes Sing Your Fame. Phenomenal album. Coming in at number three... Uh, you know, there were so many times I wanted to get the first press because it was the only uh, vinyl issue of it available at the time. It was going for like 200 bucks, and thankfully Napalm uh, re reissued it. But number th three on this list is Stronghold. And Stronghold is very highly praised for many good reasons. Uh, there's a lot more features with this, with track 5, where Hope and uh, Daylight die. They get a uh, guest session with a female vocalist that makes it all the more uh, authentic, I feel like, with you know the Lord of the Rings trilogy they try to connect with with their albums. Songs like Long Lost and Where... Long Lost to Where No Pathman Goes. Oh, that's the, I feel like that's the best track on here. Uh, the Rotting Horse of the Deadly Ground, The Shadow Lies Frozen on the Hills. Every track on here, really, there's no point in even naming them anymore, are all perfect and all intertwined with each other perfectly. And the synth in here, I really feel like at this point, um, is more uh, head forward than uh, most of their albums, where the synth is like the main uh, ingredient with this album, I feel like. And uh, comes off a little neoclassical, which makes it all the more authentic, which is what I really like about it. This album feels like it's centuries or decades old, just how they kind of tune the synth in here. Because it's not so overproduced, but just so massive in scope like most of uh, their albums. But they really outdid themselves with Stronghold. And it will always be a fa uh, favorite of mine and a fan favorite as well. So Stronghold takes the bronze at number three. Coming in at number two, uh, 
this gives me hope this album that you know even though they're really uh in their careers now a few decades into their careers they can still make beautiful albums that are insanely epic but number two in taking silver is oathbound once again gotta thank my girlfriend for giving me the first press of this on my birthday last year uh oathbound where do i begin it's easily their most melodic without a doubt in terms of guitar riffs it's easily their most melodic I like the uh, choruses they add that feel like warriors are singing tales of this long-forgotten uh, folklore that is, you know, forgotten about, I guess. And uh, the only track I gotta tell you guys to check out to make it number two alone, Land of the Dead. Land of the Dead, in my view, is easily, if not the best song Summoning has ever, ever done. Without a doubt, it is like melancholic, it's epic, it's atmospheric, it's melodic, and it gives me goosebumps every time. I've listened to this song pff, countless times, and I still get goosebumps. I still feel like a triumphant warrior when I listen to Land of the Dead. It really captivates everything Summoning is capable of doing with the tools that are given to them and, and what they use. And... I just can't get enough of it, and that song alone makes it number makes them on this uh, list at really high up on the list at number two. Other great tracks are uh, Northward, Northward, and uh, Night in Glorm. I think some of this uh, font's kind of hard to read, but Land of the Dead. I can't stress it enough. That is the song you have to check out on this album, and Oathbound makes it number two takes the silver. And number one, y'all saw it coming, number one, Minas Morgul, Land of the Dead. <sighs> this was the album I first heard by them, and immediately I fell in love with this band. Just from this album alone, I fell in love with them. And uh, I don't know if it's just my inner childhood that loves the uh, whole Tolkien Lord of the Rings setting and mood, but something can just do it right so damn well. And, you know, not only just watching the movies of Lord of the Rings, but also reading the books that Tolkien wrote, you know, which are way more in-depth in scope than the movies, it really feels like these guys genuinely read the books dozens of times. And it really captivates all the little other details the movie left out. There's so much... To, to just hear in this album that it really just connects with me and clicks with me more than any other album ever made. And I honestly consider it, which I know it's always a bold statement no matter what album you say. In my view, it's honestly one of the greatest black metal albums I've ever heard. And honestly, it's one of my, it is my all-time favorite album ever made. And um, as weird as I sound saying this, I try... Not so much to overindulge with this album, if that makes any sense, so I don't get sick of it. I listen to it on rare occasions, and each time I do, it kind of gives like a special event for me, a mini event for me. I know it with this album, I guess, and I, can't, I just, you know, I love this album. Every single song, from The Passing of the Great Company, Marching Homewards, Northbound, um and Lugbirds as well, and every other song on here. This is a flawless album, and the synth on here is kind of lo-fi. It's not as grand or massive compared to Stronghold or Oathbound. The synth in here it kind of feels like it was made out of like a Windows 95 computer, and that's what gives it that really old uh, neoclassical sound I guess they're going for. A little bit rough on the edges, but really gives an epic charm that I feel like Summoning just went way too well with this album, and I consider it a flawless album, and I love this album. What more do I need to say? I've said it enough, but this was an easy number one pick for me with Summoning. So that is that. That's what I consider the worst to best in the Summoning discography. Uh, I know you guys also recommended I do a Kitsa for this worst to best, which I probably will do next. And a few of you guys also said Portal, which I want to hold off on bands that have a small discography, like Portal, Abyssal, 
even evangelists. Like, if you guys want me to keep doing this, recommend me bands that have at least five full lengths under their belt, like Nocturnal Mortem or Pest Noir or any other bands of the sort. So, uh, really curious to know your favorite summoning albums. And that is that. So, hopefully, you guys discovered something new. Thanks for watching, liking, supporting, and subscribing. You guys are the best, and good listens.